Hey there, welcome to today's lesson on math with significant figures. Today's question of the day, what is the surface area of this sheet of aluminum foil? And you may think that this question is kind of easy, but truthfully, it's kind of tough. You should remember um, that surface area is, I mean, we're talking about a sheet of aluminum foil, so we're just talking two dimensions. Um, so we would do the 4.8 times the 1.2, and you get 5.76 square inches. Um, so the surface area is 5.76 square inches, and we are obviously talking about significant figures. There were two significant figures in each dimension of our length and width, our measurements. Uh, the 4.8 and the 1.2 each have two significant figures, but when we multiply them, we wind up with an answer that gives us three significant figures. And this is going to cause us some problems because our tools only measured two sig figs, and then we just did some math and we gained an extra sig fig. So, um, our area kind of led readers to believe that our tool was more precise than it actually was. Um, so in order to avoid this happening, scientists have come up with some rules so that we can um, maintain precision and be honest in the precision of our tools when we manipulate our measurements. Um, and this takes a lot of practice, but once you get the hang of it, it's really not too bad. So, um, anytime you are adding and subtracting your measurements, we are going to be focused on the number of digits after the decimal. Um, and we're going to try to maintain, I gotta put this ruler down. We're going to try to maintain the number of digits that follow the decimal. So we are looking at 3.2 plus 9.8. 3.2 plus 9.8, we come out with 13 even. This came out to 13 even um, when you put it in the calculator. We need our answer to have one digit behind the decimal to match the numbers in the question. So here we have one number behind the decimal and here we have one number behind the decimal. So our answer should have one number behind the decimal. So instead of this being just 13, it should be 13.0, exactly 13. Um, this is going to indicate that the tool that we use measured to the ones place and the estimated digit was to the tenths place. So again, we're doing all of this to make sure that our um, level of precision maintains a steady level when we are doing calculations. Now, here's a few more examples. Um, the 3.2 and the 9.8 we've already done, but there are some others that are here for you to do. Um, so if you look at the 4.000 minus the 1.5, your answer should have the same number of digits behind the decimal as the 1.5. This has a lot of precision. This has only a little bit of precision. So we are going to be matching our answer to the number in the question that had the lowest amount of precision. So that's something to take into account. So really, you just put it in the calculator and then round your final answer according to the rules. So in this case, for number two, you are going to round to have one number behind the decimal. In number three, you should round to have, again, one number behind the decimal because 4.7 only has one number where 2.999 has three. In number four, you will have no numbers behind the decimal. 50 doesn't have a, a number behind its uh, its imaginary decimal, so your answer should be a whole number. And the same is true for number five. Um, 50, again, does not have a number behind the decimal, so you are going to match your answer to that. So this is what you get in the calculator. They're going across now. Um, so some of them indicate like number three, for example, um, the calculator will tell you it's 7.699, but in order to get just one number behind the decimal, we had to round. So that will become 7.7. .7. In number four, we are getting 47.6, but to have no numbers behind the decimal, it rounds to 48. And in number five, we get 47.4, but to have no numbers behind the decimal, it rounds to 47. When multiplying and dividing, you want your measurement 
um, with the fewest number of significant figures to be the one that controls the answer. So in both 3.8 and 1.2, we're working with two significant figures. So the final answer should also be two significant figures. This is a coincidence that these are the same level of precision or the same number of significant figures, you're always going to want to match whichever one has the lowest precision. Again, when you do math, you should not be adding precision. The math should help you maintain precision. And typically you are going to do the entire question and then the final answer is what gets rounded. So when you do the math for 3.8 times 1.2, you get 4.56 which has three significant figures. So we're gonna have to round this 4.56 so that we get two sig figs. So the six is big enough to kick the five up, which is going to give us 4.6 as the final answer. All right, here are four more for you to practice. Um, again, be mindful of significant figures when you're doing this, do the math first and then round the final answer. All right, these are going across. So number seven is over here. 50 divided by 2.5 comes out to 20. 20 on the nose, but it is important that we do not put a decimal behind the 20 because this 50 lacking a decimal only has one significant figure. So your 20 should also have one significant figure. Now over here, we have three times three, but we're working with zeros just for the sake of the sig figs. Um, this first three, the 3.0, has two significant figures, which is fewer significant figures than this guy with four. So we are only going to round our answer to 9.0. And in this way, we're not adding any extra zeros or any extra precision. In number nine, we have 2.1000 times 2.1, and that comes out to 4.41, which needs to be rounded to have two significant figures in total. So this one is not big enough to kick the four up, so it's just going to get dropped, and we are left with 4.4. And now this one is where I drive everybody crazy, but it kind of indicates how the rules for significant figures can uh, sometimes be a little bit misleading. Um, but it really is a testament to how junky these tools are. So we have 50 with one sig fig, so a number that was rounded to 50, divided by two. Um, we all know that 50 divided by two is 25, but because of the rules of sig figs, we can't use 25 as the answer. We have to round it to 30, which really stinks, but it gives you, um, a reminder that the level of precision of your tools is super important. If this were 50 with a decimal, then we could do 25. But because it's 50 without a decimal, we have to round it to 30. Um, and that's because the five is big enough to kick the two up. If it had come out to 24, for whatever reason, it would round down to 20. So um, most of the time, sig figs don't do this to us. Um, it's typically these, these um, upper four questions it's super close, the numbers make sense, um, but in the case where you're getting 50 divided by two equals 30, it tells you how junky the tool is, which is why measuring with precision is super important. So that's what I have for you in terms of math with significant figures. Be sure to leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson, and I'll see you there. Bye.